Hello and welcome to Port of Spain here in Trinidad. We really have some exciting times ahead for you. This is an historical cricketing moment for the first time in the history of cricket. Live pictures will be coming to you from the Caribbean into Britain and all over Europe and indeed we'll be transmitting via our satellites throughout the Caribbean as well. Yeah, so that was the late great Tony Gregg 30 years ago with Sky's first telecast, if I can even do that. <laughs> um, and because of that, 30 years of Sky cricket, we're, we're going to try and pick our top 10 moments. And the guys, Michael Atherton, Nasser Hussain and David Lloyd, have all picked their 10 moments along with myself. And we're going to try and work out the definitive 10. Um, first of all, Nas, Ath, I'll start with you, Ath. Were you on that trip out in the Caribbean? No, Nas was on it. I uh, had the good fortune of not being selected for the Caribbean and went to Zimbabwe on an A tour where I got on the front foot on some very flat pitches and got a shed load of runs while Nas was ducking and weaving against Bishop, Ambrose, Patterson, and Walsh. <laughs> Nas, can you remember? I mean, I remember as a kid because I would have been 10. It's hard, to, it's hard to remember, really, the fact you didn't see overseas tours on TV. Was there, did it feel any different, the fact that people were able to see what you were getting up to? It felt a lot different. It's the first time I'd ever seen myself on TV batting, to be honest. <laughs> I visualised like, like, like a right-handed right <laughs> David Gower. <laughs> I was like a right-handed Monty Panasar, to be honest, when I actually <laughs> saw myself. Jeffrey Boycott was on commentary, and I, my first test innings, I nicked off the Bishop 13. And I was walking through the hotel lobby and Boycott just shouted at me, you'll never get runs with an open back face, he say. And I thought, <laughs> welcome to international cricket. So, yeah, it was incredible, really. I mean, Sky came on board, B, Sky, B then. We all did this sort of advert, the young lions are going to roar or something. I'm not sure we roared, but it was great fun. Give us your best Tony Gregg then, Bumble. It's got to be better than Keezy. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm telling you, British people over there. <laughs> yeah. 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 He was a gem. Absolutely brilliant. I've, I work with him so often. And I roomed with him out in Sri Lanka. We stayed in a villa with Ian Bishop as well. It was absolutely brilliant. Little stories about Greggy is that every, whenever he went to a function, he took his own bottle of red wine. And you couldn't go anywhere near it. <laughs> hey, what are you doing with that red wine, man? <laughs> <laughs> he was from Poland. <laughs> <laughs> Is it true? I always remember him, well, not remember him, but the 12th man stories and the tape <laughs> that made him bigger. Is it like, was he a king in Sri Lanka? Is that right? Yeah, yeah. He, he was sponsored by the tourist board in Sri Lanka. So <laughs> any opportunity, he was, oh, what a wonderful place. Yeah, Sri Lanka. All these little people running around. It's absolutely marvellous. <laughs> <laughs> you got into a bit of Richie there as well. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Uh, these top tens that you've all picked. We're going to try and sort of get through them as best we can. That's obviously, there's not 40 different ones. Uh, there's some that cross over, but you've all got your views on how you see the last 30 years of Sky Cricket. You, some of them, you guys are obviously involved in. You can always sort of tell how vain someone is by how many of their own they pick. Um, now. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> I think they've sort of been done to death a bit in this lockdown. Um, the World Cup win, that's obviously one of them. Uh, that we can put in there straight away. England's World Cup win, Ben Stokes headingly, and the Women's World Cup as well. Yeah! Ball hits the last pair. You can expect something like that to happen. So England have won the World Cup. Ah, you were at that day at Lords, weren't you, when the women won the World Cup in 2017? I was. I wasn't commentating actually, but I did go and uh, write for the paper. It was a great day. And the story that. Tom Harrison tells is that they worked out there were more cups of coffee sold in that match at Lords than any <laughs> other game that, that, had, that had been played there. Obviously a very different uh, audience, family kind of audience rather than people queuing up at the bar for 10 pints. Uh, Nass was in the crowd, I think, with his daughter. I mean, it was a terrific day. And I think it's got to be one of our moments just because one of the themes of the last well, 10 years, I suppose. I know we're going back 30 years, but I think the last 10 years 
has been the rise uh, of women's cricket, which we've been obviously at the heart of at Sky. So that has to be one of the moments. I know, I mean, the way I did it was to try and pick out half a dozen what I thought were kind of big moments in terms of the context, um, bigger moments. So the Edgebaston 05 win, I thought the yeah. 2005 Ashes win, for example, was the most significant of any that I've seen at home in the last 30 years. The World Cup finals that you mentioned, men and women's. Um, I, I put in Yuvraj's six sixes, actually, in the World T20, because I felt that in terms of significant moments, that World T20 in 2007 was unbelievably significant because that was the moment that India got switched on to T20. That, in turn, led to the IPL, which in turn is going to, has changed and is going to change the game more than any other thing, I think, in the last 20 years. It's also nice to see Brody getting a stiff neck six times <laughs> and that over. I think Bumble was on commentary. Weren't you on commentary, Bumble, with Ravi? With Ravi, absolutely brilliant. Ravi was all over it. It, it was terrific. And Brody's going round the park. And that <laughs> batter you've righteous, he was just flicking it. Just a little <laughs> flick and off he went. Brilliant. That's huge. That is a piggy. It's out of here. Six ball. Just a flick of the wrist. This is in the air again. Three in a row. It doesn't. It's four in a row. Five. Yes. Last ball of the innings, and he's put it away, oh has he? Yes, into the crowd, six sixes and then over. Yuvrat Singh finishes things off in style. We did a thing with Ravi Shastri early on in this, and he said in that, you might not remember this, Bumble, that you actually, not changed the com rotor, but you, you said, Ravi, you should be on now towards the end of this innings. Is that right? Did you, did yeah, you think yeah, that, something that's, was going to happen? That's, that's right as well, because, you know, sometimes these producers haven't a clue when they're doing <laughs> those combos. <laughs> and so I just switched it slightly. I completely agree with that about you, Brad, your six sixes. But which was the more defining moment, that or the final at Johannesburg, Pakistan, India, that global audience for that, and Miss Barr trying to scoop it over Shreesan's head. India win, and then they end up, you know, the IPL. Name the bowler. You start for 10. Who was the bowler at Miss Barr on that day for India? I had to look this up. Caught Shreesan, Jaginda Sharma. And after that, I, I, I can remember story. Ravi's, I can remember Ravi's call. He just went, Shreesan, India win. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the IPL and the IPL was born on the back of that. So I think we should have one of those two in. We can argue which one. I'm not bothered either, really. I nearly had you read his six sixes. I agree. Either one, but it's quite nice to see Brody with a stiff neck. <laughs> can we have just on the back of that? Can we have Broad game for six sixes, but not have Broad's aim for fifteen? <laughs> well, yeah, that depends, doesn't it? Really, if any of them get in. I agree, because I, I saw both of your picks, and I think you could argue, as you say, which was the more poignant, because you've got to remember, don't you, I suppose, the Indians didn't seem to have any real interest in T20 cricket before then. I mean, and then they won that World Cup against Pakistan. And then I remember Andrew Simons going for like one point whatever million and all these players, all of a sudden, it completely changed the face of cricket as we know it. even in England you know I play with Dravid and all these people all of a sudden the overseas players it wasn't the most sought after thing to be in county cricket what Ath what do you think would have happened had India not won had you Raj not hit the six sixes where would we be in cricket if there was no IPL I, I think in the end they would have cottoned on or come round to it um but that was the moment, you're quite right, that they started to get interested in T20. The talk before that was that because T20 was such a shorter game and 50 over cricket was six hours long and that allowed for a greater number of adverts, for example, on television. So 50 over cricket was more of a money generator. 
Um, but you're quite right, on the back of that World T20, the IPL came in. And I think of all the events in the last 30 years that we're talking about on Sky, that is the most significant event. So whether we should have had in our top 10, for example, Brendan McCollum's innings in the opening IPL match, you know, from which it was quite clear that this was going to be a game changer because it has changed the game fundamentally and it will continue to do so, no question. Do you think it's all been positive, Ness? Oh, you can definitely debate that. Your purist will say, no, it's changed the game too much in favour of hitting and techniques in test match cricket have gone downhill, etc. I would argue against that, to be honest. I think we are lucky that we have developed a new format in 2020. It's not new anymore, but it was then. There's a lot of sports that would be trying to constantly trying to sort of redefine themselves. And we've got to remember we are here to provide, or the game is here, to provide some kind of entertainment. And you can't argue that T20 cricket is not entertaining. You'll forget about it very quickly. We will forget about a lot of the T20 games we've worked on over the years. But while it's happening, it is very, very entertaining. And you've got the king of T20 comms in there in Bumble, who makes it even more entertaining, I have to say. Yeah, I mean, Bumble, you, you got, before India won the World T20, you know, when we started it in England, you straight away as a commentator, as a pundit, you got it, didn't you? You just realised that this was here to stay. It was going to be something special. And there was a slightly different way you had to pr produce it or present it. <laughs> Well, Charlie, I'm over here in the middle of the stage and when all this is finished, there's going to be a pop concert. It's going to be United Colours of Sound. It's going to be D-Side. It's going to be Mystique. <laughs> there's one fell over. You can't eat anybody. Get over the top and he goes. Who's in the lead? Oh, Blocky. Oh, it's Beaches, bro. They've all gone down. Well, well it, it's like rock and roll. You know, it's, it's so popular. I did get it straight away. I was excited by it. And going back to 40 over cricket, you know, John Player League, Sunday League cricket, that was really exciting when it came in. Gillette Cup cricket, 65 overs and then 60 overs came in. Excited by that. So when they bring the 20 over competition in, I thought it was fantastic. And IPL has been so positive, 95% positive. The, the argument that I've put to it is, is that it, it's probably a little too long, but I understand why, because people are making money out of it. Um, individuals, or private individuals, are, are making the money, but 95% has been positive. I agree with everything that NASA said. It's entertaining. It's great entertainment. But the administrators have got to get a balance. You know, that's, that, that's the difficulty in getting the balance between four-day, five-day cricket, 50-over cricket, and the rock and roll, which is 2020. I mean, look at 2020 finals day. Every 2020 finals day is sold out. It's like Glastonbury, isn't it? When the great unwashed all get down to Somerset somewhere, wherever it is. <laughs> so, well, hang on, let's get it right. So far in the gun, you've had a producers at Sky and everyone who goes to Glastonbury because they don't shower. <laughs> no, they'll have a wash, do they? <laughs> Right, okay, so are we going to have, can we decide, do you want Aths, you have six sixes, because I think one of these can go in, or do you want India winning the World T20? Who, who has you a are, Rob, you are the host, you are the man. If there is any kind of debate, you are the man. We have given you the options, which of those two is going to go into our final ten, the six sixes or the winning moment? Well, I think that's slightly unfair because I'm going to go with Ath every time. <laughs> sixes. I mean, I love the fact Ath picked the poignant moments. You know, he's not just gone for obvious ones. He's picked the, you know, he's done because you're talking to Ath. You don't have to use long words like poignant or something like that, Keith. Stick to Kent. Right. Anyway, okay, let's move on. There's, there's a couple, well, there's one person that's involved in a couple of these. Um, and I don't think we've done a lot on him, actually, but he was obviously one of the greatest ever. Um, Nas, you have picked Lara beating Australia. No, sorry, Af. You've picked Lara beating Australia single-handedly in 99 uh, in Barbados, 153 he made. And Nas, you've got the 375. Um, 
Are either of you involved in the 375? I was captain, inevitably. <laughs> <laughs> Never looked like getting him out. Uh, and I was there for his 401 or, or whatever, but I was in the commentary box there. Nass in the 401 wasn't in the 375 because I made him 12th man. Um, and then I ended up there. fielding for about 300 because Ramps, <laughs> Ramps got ill and I fielded for a day and a half. But I, I, I might just start, I've ignored both those world records actually as, as fantastic achievements they were and iconic moments against England's side. But for me, Test cricket is about A, the balance between bat and ball, and a B, about the competition. And neither of those matches actually, they both came at the end of a series when the, the matches, when the series was decided. They were both played on graveyard pitches. The balance between bat and ball was totally skewed. So I, uh, Brian Lara is the, the most thrilling opposition batsman that I've seen in 30 years um, on Sky. So I have picked a moment, but I've picked a moment when he's uh, won a key test match, uh, when the balance between bat and ball was red hot, a brilliant innings of 153 at Bridgetown in 1999 against Australia, one of, the, one of the great match winning innings. I can remember where we were actually, we were in Lahore of all places preparing for the 1999 World Cup. Don't ask me why we were in Lahore, but that's where we were. And I, I remember watching that innings of Brian Lara at Bridgetown against Australia and just thought it was the most fabulous thing. So the obvious picks would be the 375 or the 401. I wanted a Lara in there, but I've gone for what I thought was a, uh, a better innings in a better test match. Um, so I've gone for his 153 at Bridgetown against Australia. I've got that as well. That's in mine. How there it is. Was, I thought you had the, the Sarwan uh, 100. No, no, I've got the Brian Lara. <laughs> I've written it down here. See it. It's right in front of me. The Brian Lara. A late change. <laughs> right, we might need... Okay, fair enough. So if you've got that... Uh, wh why was it special for you? Uh, exactly as others have said. There's nothing I can add to that. <laughs> <laughs> I've got here written down, West Indies record run chase versus Australia, 418 Barbados. But that was no, in 2003 I... with Sarwan and Chanderpaul, wasn't it? <laughs> no, like, you, you, it's not what I was thinking of. It's the one <laughs> that I'm thinking of. is Brian Lara <laughs> against Australia. They finished nine down. <laughs> That's the one. I mean, we're at cross waiters here, aren't we? <laughs> okay, fair enough. We'll move to um, the three. Give your, give your points or your case for the 375, Ness. I think Ath makes, as per usual, a very valid argument. About... Can we not say that again? You say that all the time. Whenever you well, want he does. To... He makes a, he Whenever makes you a very... disagree with Ath. Unlike you, have... you. Unlike you, he actually makes a decision and it makes a very valid argument. You just sit on that fence time after time. But I have to say that the significance of a moment, this is about this, I think the title of this is Sky's Moments. And when someone breaks a world record and you have Bob Willis on commentary saying, Brian Charles Lara of Trinidad and Tobago, we all remember that moment, the ball off Chris Lewis going away for four through square legs, so Garfield Sobers coming on the pitch, Lara down on his knees, the crowd going mental. You can't tell me that that's not a significant moment. For all the tosh that Atherton came out with, a <laughs> battle between ball and bat and all that, leave that for another occasion. This was a significant world moment and it was just, I, I think, unpassable. The field is set. Everybody but third man and long leg is saving the single. Here comes Chris Lewis to Brian Lara. He's gone for the pearl, and there it is. Brian Lara's done it. The ball rockets into the boundary fence. The new world record holder is Brian Charles Lara of Trinidad and Tobago. What a moment for Trinidad and Tobago and West Indies cricket. Rob, you've, you've got us. He's got a point there. He's got a point. <laughs> yeah, uh, fair enough. Yeah, I'll go, I'll go, no, fair I'll enough. Go with that. Fair enough. That. Yeah. Why are you going with Keith? Make I a decision. Watching that, 
and the bat lift and all, you know, everyone's always taught just, just, you know, you have the quicker the bowler, the lower the bat lift. And then this Lara came in and just did it completely different. He had the, what bat did he use? Can you remember the bat that he had? No, he had MRF stickers at the end, but I don't know what he had then. He had the grey nickel. Scoop. No, Scoop, he, uh... Scoop, surely. Yeah, I remember grey nickels back in the day. We all, as kids, we all had that. You had the, the Diana drive, the mega drive. You had the power spot, huh? And Lara the red had scoop the... was the best, wasn't it? The red grey nickel scoop. That was an outstanding bat. No, he had the plinker. <laughs> he had the plinker, the grey nickel plinker. <laughs> 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 that was the plinker. So I'm going to decide. I think as much as Bumble, well, allegedly Bumble, who's just changed his mind, it seems, <laughs> have the same one. Um, I think the 375, right? Because I was a kid watching that as well. And that was just the most astonishing thing I think I'd ever seen. So, all right, so we've got number six, Lara's 375. We also should say that Edge Baston 05, you all one in there? Okay. Yeah. So that's in there as well. Now, there's two England wins that you've all picked um, that we can debate. The first one, Bumble and Nass. Um, Karachi win in the dark, the significance mm. of that. That's through, that's an inside edge. This could be it. Already, Nasser Hussein is celebrating. England have won this third test match at Karachi. Pakistan's unbeaten record goes up in smoke. Extraordinary scenes here, which, to be fair, many of the people in the ground will be unable to say they saw it. I was working on that and if they would never do that today, they would never play in that sort of conditions and light. And Pakistan knew they were going to lose the game and they got into delaying tactics as any team would, looking to delay them down to eight and nine overs an hour. Steve Buckner was the umpire and that was real old school umpiring as far as I was concerned because Steve Buckner said, I know what you're up to, we're staying out here. And the fielders were running the wrong way. England were getting more frenetic. And Buckner just kept them out there. And they kept looking and appealing to him. Uh, but I thought it was a brilliant piece of umpiring. It was a great dramatic game to, to work on. It must have been fabulous for the players as well. But hats off to Buckner because he kept them out there. They would never, ever stay out in, these, in those conditions right now. That's nice, Captain. Yeah, I don't like talking about it, Rob, to be honest. First tour to the subcontinent for a while and we won out there. It was the most boring, turgid series of all time. It was a real batathon, flat Pakistan pitches. And then we got to the last afternoon. I think one of the correspondents, Henderson, who would he have written for then? Telegraph, maybe? Telegraph, yeah. Telegraph filed his piece saying another boring draw. This series has been the dullest of all time. And then woke up the next morning. And we'd won, really. And I remember, <laughs> after you remember, oh, we, whatever, we bowled them out and we were walking off. And obviously there was a time constraint there. And, I, um, you know, it was going to be a run chase. We needed some hitters in. I ran, I ran up to Af walking off the field and went, Af, um, what do you think about the batting line? And I'm thinking of moving Hick up the order and moving you down the order. And Af just swore at me and told me, <laughs> I have been your best batsman on this trip. There is no way I am moving down the order. Put his pads on and went out and we knocked them off. <laughs> and everything Bumble says, everything Bumble says was spot on. We had Inzi running in the wrong direction at deep <laughs> cover. <laughs> and we had Steve Buckner saying to Moen, whatever you do, however much you slow this game down, Moen, we are finishing it off. By the time we got upstairs on that balcony, it was pitch black. Pitch black. It was an unbelievable scene. Yeah. So, may, again, for us, it was just a boring <laughs> test series. But you can imagine it made good viewing at home here in England. Speaking of that, this might just back it up a little bit. Who topped the averages? Atherton. What did he average? I don't know. The way he talked to me walking off the field, it was like 220 or something. <laughs> 96. <laughs> Michael Atherton, three matches, 341 runs, high score of 125, 68 he averaged in that. Very good. Second Easy, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you will not get flatter pitches. I, I only toured Pakistan once in Test Series. 
So hang up, these it pictures were really, really flat. <laughs> I know they where you're going here, Keith. They didn't <laughs> spin, they didn't do anything. Flat, flat pitches. How many did Nath get? <laughs> What's Nath? <laughs> <laughs> like a double act, didn't it? The Key and Atherton show, great. Oh, Let's brilliant. move on, we've got to get through 10. But just, I'm can just I, can I, can I just dispute uh, and go for my moment, which is yeah, no, no, you can give me a second. Let Rob get his funny out. Come on, because top of the average is Atherton, then it was Craig White, then it was Graham Thorpe, then it was Ian Salisbury, then Darren Gott, <laughs> then Ashley <Ashton> Cross, <laughs> then Chris Gothic, then Nasser Hussain on the flattest pitches you've ever seen. <laughs> didn't spin or do anything. Three matches, ninety-two runs, average of twenty. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, go for your series Ad, that you chose. The one before, really. Another match that I've got a hundred in, and I think one that Nath's got a pair we'll just in. Talk, as well, let's just talk about Ash, <laughs> shall we? <laughs> but I, I've gone for the summer before the last match at the Oval when we beat West Indies for the first time in. The, the, so I've got the moment is Nath holding the Wisden Trophy, the first England captain to do so since, I don't know, Colin Cowdery or somebody. But for all our childhood, the theme running through English cricket was getting a good old kicking against the West Indies. And that series, which was the one before the Pakistan one that you're talking about, very significant summer, first year of central contract, Duncan Fletcher coming in, uh, NASA's captain, and beating the West Indies for the first time since the 60s. Um, so that was my moment. Um, very, it's kind of similar, you know, Karachi, but I just thought beating West Indies for the first time in a long time. Rob, you can't and have it was both. A match Rob. where Ambrose and. <laughs> you have all my winning moments, Rob, if you want. <laughs> but did you get a pair in that match? I did get a pair in that match, yes. I got out to Nagamutu in the second inning. <laughs> <Who? laughs> Basically, my team, as per usual, saved my job and I gave it the big one. <laughs> on the oval balcony with the wisdom trophy. <laughs> Tough pitches in that series, wasn't it, for batsmen? Why? We're not going to go through averages again, please, Keezy. Well, tell if me. You, if you I want mean, you to, you've I, been for six months, you've been saying stats are for Prats, and now you're just loading this vodcast with stats, please. Well, I just thought it was interesting for people listening or watching to know that. You know, it must have been tough pitches because Trescothic averaged 47. That would have been when he first came around. <laughs> Atherton, Athers, you average. I mean, for as great a player as you are, NASA didn't pick you in his team of the 90s. But you were second in the averages. And you averaged 34. Then Michael Vaughan, who just came around 28. Alex Stewart, 24. Graham Thorpe, 24. You know, these were tough pitches, clearly. Um, Get and to your right punchline. Right down the bottom. <laughs> Ed Hussain, four matches, 61 runs, average 10. <laughs> <laughs> if you bang a pair in the last game you ain't going to be averaging 120 are you do the maths <laughs> oh, I, didn't play on the, hey, I didn't play in the worst one which was the first game at Lords that was that series wasn't it Af? that went all first, over yeah first one was Edgebast and Lords Lords when Lords. we had Dewey Cork, captain, actually. Cork and yeah. Goff at the end I had a broken finger thankfully that did everything, and Cork and Goff got us over the line at the end. But that was a spicy series against Ambrose and Walsh. Who did you who did you get your double hundred against, Rob? Hey. <laughs> um, right, okay, it's a toss up, but I think we'll go. Um, I think I'm just going to choose Karachi because that's because your club. big buddy NASA before this he texted you, he WhatsApped you two days ago and said, Rob, make sure you get Karachi in this top ten. <laughs> we, we can have both, Rob. Hey, eh? why are we deciding between? Eh? <laughs> well, because what you find, NASA, is we're doing a top ten and we're already at number seven. Yeah. So we've got others to go with. It's not all about your teams and your <laughs> win. Right, okay. One that um Two of you picked is the Melbourne England win. Yeah! Yeah! Oh, Matt Pryor has taken it. England have won the game. England have retained the Ashes. Australia are beaten, well beaten, beaten into the earth. And this on one of their own favourite grounds. It's a fabulous place for England to start the celebrations. 
that was a for me the best England side I've ever seen. If you look at that batting lineup, well, I've seen. Uh, you go Cook, Strauss, Trot, Peterson, Bell, Pryor. Um, you know, it is the best England batting lineup I've seen. You've got Melbourne, an iconic Boxing Day Test match. The decision to toss, have a bowl, bowl them out for 98, end up ahead, and then go on not only retain the Ashes, but win in Australia for the first time in 24 years or whatever it was. That was an incredible test match and an incredible side, really. I think that was the best win uh, as a series and as a test match I've seen as a commentator for an England test match side. Did you know that England were going to win that series? I mean, that must have been one of the times that you would, that an England team would have gone to Australia and anyone would have given them a prize, wouldn't you? I agree with what Nas said. I thought that was a fabulous performance by England. To win not just three test matches, England won that series 3-1, but every one of those wins came by an innings. To do that in Australia, it wasn't the greatest Australian team I've ever seen, but it wasn't a bad Australian team. I think to win for the first time there in quarter of a century, and not just win, but hammer Australia by... Three victories by an innings. And the, the Boxing Day game at Melbourne that day summed up the series, really, with, you know, Australia whistled out, dominating the crowd just disappearing at the end of the day. Um, and to put it in context, England have been back there since and, what, have lost 5 nil and 4 nil or something. So that's how good winning three tests in Australia is, let's be honest. <laughs> All right, so Melbourne goes in there. We're down to... We're How many to we got? How many we got? We've got eight or eight. So we've got England's World Cup win, Stokes Headingley, Women's World Cup, Edge Baston 05, Yuv Raj, Lara's 375, Karachi, Melbourne. Um, a couple of individuals... We've got to have, and, we've got to have an Anderson moment. I, I mean, we'll get to that. We'll get... Cricketer, Don't worry, we'll get to I've that. seen. We'll Rob's get in to... charge, yeah. We'll get to it. Don't worry. You know, I am looking at your list. But what I want to look at so we've got a few individual performances or individual, individual moments. Anderson will be in these. Bumble, KP versus Australia at Bristol. Why do you want that in there? I've tried to pick blokes who would get me on the edge of the seat. You know, things that I've got um, or situations that would get me on the edge of the seat. We've talked about the win in the dark. Alex Stewart's tons. I thought that was fantastic. Kevin Peterson, he's the best England batsman that I've seen. And so that's why I put him in there. There's got to be something, the best moments with, with Kevin Peterson in there. And his Bristol innings was as good as any that he's played. I'm with Af, that, that Jimmy Anderson has to be in there. Andrew Flintoff, that, that spell of Flintoffs in 2009, when he just rose to the occasion. You know, you've only got a couple left, haven't you? Have you got a couple left? We could always bin off Karachi or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I mean, it, it, Kevin Peterson, come on. Peterson's gone for the big one. That's sailing into the crowd again. It's a monster, this one. Shades of Vivian Richards here. Australia. Their torment continues. They can't win a cricket match here now. What's his best knock that we've seen on Sky? You can have the, the one day at Bristol. You can have the 100 that he scored out in South Africa. Yeah, brilliant knock. 100 at the Oval, if I've seen. 158. And, or you've got the 100 Mumbai. he scored in India, or the one he scored after, what was it, the, um, the text gate, and it was like reintegration or whatever it is. Or you can have the Sri Lanka 100, which is his best 100, Michael Atherton. His Mumbai will be right uh, up there. Of, of those, Mumbai, I think. I mean, you say he played four or five of the best innings that we've seen on, on Sky in, in 30 years. The ones that you mentioned, of those, I'd probably go for Mumbai. And that was another fabulous win from England, to win in India. 
as they did having lost the first test in that series was a tremendous achievement under Alistair Cook. I, I would I, I almost put in his Brett Lee um, yeah. the Oval in 05, but I kind of got my 05 moment with Sedgeback. Yeah, yeah. If you're asking yeah. me what, you know, the best innings that I've seen are certainly is Mumbai 100 uh, on, a, on a dust bowl would be up there for sure. Mumbai. But I, I went for an Anderson moment just because I think, I mean, it's very difficult to, con- you know, compare batters and bowlers, but I just think the level of performance from Jimmy Anderson over such a long period of time, he'd have to be, I think, the best England cricketer that I've seen in that 30 year period that we're talking about in England colours. So, you know, whether you go for his 500th moment, the moment that he passed Beefy and Antigua, uh, any of those. I think Bumble was on commentary for his 500th wicket moment, a great bit of commentary. You know, it's a, what did you say, Bumble? It's an, it's, a, it's an elite band and he's joined it or something like that. I can't remember the word. An but, elite club and Jimmy Anderson's just joined it. Put that in, Rob. You can remember your own comms, innit? Yeah, put that in, Rob. That was great. He's <laughs> forgotten everything else, but he got but, that uh, I do remember that. I, but wasn't remember it, that. Wasn't, I remember you saying that. Wasn't it the little pause, though, in between the club or whatever? Oh, play it again, Sam. Play it <laughs> masterful. Yeah! Bowling! It's an elite club, and Anderson's just joined it. Fabulous moment. Well, you've, you've obviously, you're a lot older than us, so you've seen more cricketers than us. Where does Anderson rate? As he, as said, he's, what you said, the best cricketer, England cricketer that he's seen. Uh, what about you? In the 30-year period that we're talking about, which is right. the 30 years of Sky there, so kind of beef is really before that. And I, mean, I think you're hard to look beyond Jimmy in that time frame. Jimmy... We remember him when he, he came from Burnley and started playing for Langs and Langs picked him and we were doing a domestic game and Bob was there. Bob was commentating, Bob Willis. And we looked at the speed gun and there's this young, fresh faced lad. I think he had that mullet on as well, if you remember. He had that streak in his hair. And Bob, Bob pressed his lazy switch and said, is that speed gun right? This kid's bowling 90 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he's all over the place, Jimmy. But I remember in bowling. I'm, I asked Nasser. I said, tell, "Tell me, tell me about this bloke." And Nas said, "He's the absolute real deal. He bowls some incredible deliveries." But there was a time when I think it was Rodney Marsh who tried to alter his action, and he he gave it a good go. Anderson, he gave it a go, and then went back to to what he knows, this is what I know, this is what I'm comfortable with. Um, but he, he started off as Banksy, that artist who does all the stuff on the walls, the graffiti, and he's finished up as Rembrandt. He is an absolute star, Jimmy Anderson. And I agree with everything that Mike Latherton said, that I think Jimmy Anderson is England's greatest bowler. Did anybody see the little Twitter thing that Lancashire put out the other day of Jimmy? Oh, yeah. yeah. How good. Imagine I've facing that. Every one of those balls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. In swing, out swing, everything. It was outstanding. God, now give us a. I know we've done a. Uh, well, I mean, I agree with everything that they've said. KP himself, in that brilliant um, KP documentary that he did, um, <laughs> said that <laughs> said that the, the hundred in Sri Lanka was his best hundred. The one at the Oval uh, against the Australians in the Ashes 2005 probably meant the most to the England fans. Um, Anderson is the best bowler that we have had in those 30, if you think of the England bowlers we've seen in 30 years, Anderson is just so skillful. You know, Saker was right, the most skillful bowler in the world. And we could tie two in here. And I know Af doesn't like too many sort of personal moments and personal send-offs, but you could tie in Cook and Anderson because Anderson went past McGrath um, in Cook's final test match. So that Cook send-off at the Oval, um, mm-hmm. another, you know, what, another lad that's been much loved by this um, generation of cricket followers and England fans, Alistair Cook, leading run getter, who will forget that time at the Oval. Last game, everyone was desperate. Started with 100 in Nagpur, everyone was desperate for him to finish with 100. 
and he, and he delivered that and there wasn't a, a dry a, a eye in the house to be honest not there that's just a single or what has happened here what a way to bring it up what a way to bring up three figures alistair cook has done it a century in his first ever test match and no century in his last well played what a bonus buzzers fantastic achievement well certainly you and bumble have both picked that cook farewell bumble why is that special for you Exactly as Nasser said. So I've got a great idea, Rob. Let's make it the best eleven. <laughs> Not <with> the best <laughs> ten. <laughs> best eleven. I think that's far better because there's eleven in a team, isn't there? <laughs> it tends just a daft number. Well, eleven in a team. Key. Key would have to make a decision. Come on, Key, make a decision. Well, no, we we haven't made the fight. We're down with we're, we're, with Melbourne. There, we're at number eight, so we've got two spots. And I think the fact that. Ath, I don't think you picked the cook farewell. Why? Here at Orkney. <laughs> uh, well, I just, I, I, what I did was I went for Anderson, who's the best England player that I've seen in that time frame. I didn't put two moments together because I thought, well, you know, it's all about picking a moment. So I've gone for Anderson's 700 ticket with Bumble's iconic commentary. And yeah. then I went for the best overseas player that I've seen. And Shane Warne. So I had a Shane Warne moment in there because along with Brian Lara, he's the best overseas cricketer that I've seen. And I had Warne's 700 cricket, which I think came on Boxing Day at Melbourne as well when he got Andrew Strauss out. But I understand you may not want to go there. But I, I just think, you know, in that 30-year time frame, what a cricketer he was. Um, so I had a, I had a Warne moment in there as well. Best 12. Let's, let's <laughs> pick it 12. <laughs> I just want to quick, because we, we, we still got the bases loaded. So we've got Cook Farewell, we've got KP. Uh, we can debate. If we say KP and Mumbai. Um, Bumble, you also went, you had Atherton versus Donald. I know these two have done quite a bit on that. What's, give us a quick word on Atherton versus Donald. Drama. Just one word. Absolute drama. That's two. Yeah. <laughs> Here's two more. <laughs> Box office. <laughs> um, Alex Stewart's tons in Barbados. Uh, Keezy, can I ask you a question? Out of the two, if we have to, if we have to go one, um, Atherton, Johannesburg, because I'm not going to ask him because he'll go all shy. Which do you think was better viewing? The Donald Atherton, Atherton, Johannesburg, if we had to pick one of those. I, I nearly went for one of those, I have to be honest. Well, again, I was a kid when these, well, younger when these things happened. And this sort of sums it up, really. I remember watching every ball of the Atherton Donald and thinking, oh, my God, that's quick. The 180-odd in Johannesburg, I sort of watched for half an hour, switched off, and then was quite pleased when it, you know, when he celebrated. Ended. Coming in. <laughs> <laughs> so Do we get, does one of those get in the 10 or not? One of the Atherton moments? Well... The problem is they probably do, but I think that we've done them a lot, you know. At the, they were the Atherton Donald is one of my, you know, favourite moments growing up. But can it get in there? Do you want it to get in there ahead of a Cook or an Anderson or Peterson? Yeah, I, I think that is another suggestion. Let's have Rob Key's best ten, and then you can put <laughs> others in. We could do all that. We could we could do the best for Sky. <laughs> And then we'll have Rob King's best 10, and then you've got others in. Right, anyway, let me just quickly run through a few more. Um, Bumble, you've got Graham Onions, his last wicket stands. That's in the South African series, I'd imagine. I've got them two in, and then also that Monty's dive at Cardiff. Yeah, that's and, right. and that, you know, they're just drama, real entertainment drama. That everybody uh, biting the Where was Monty's is. dive? Mon Monty's dive was in Auckland. It started yeah, well, in Auckland but ended in Cardiff. It finished up in started Cardiff. front crawling in. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's Monty's dive in Auckland near Cardiff. And then there's Monty and Jimmy, that rear guard action, down in Cardiff, down the road from Auckland. 
a great, and, brilliant, you, and brilliant commentary at Cardiff, wasn't it? Monty Panasar and Jimmy Anderson. No, they, they, these are things that, you know, they, they've got to be in. And Onions in Sri Lanka, of course, when he was, <laughs> when he was just blocking out. Twice he did it. Yeah. In Sri Lanka? Not Sri Lanka, just South Africa. <laughs> <laughs> what you've got for um, Sri Lanka is you got England lose the la off the last ball against Sri Lanka. Were you commentating then? That was at Henley, wasn't it? Uh, that's Jimmy Anderson in tears, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Ath made yeah, him that, I mean, put that in as well. <clears throat> it, it, I mean, the Jesus drama. You had looked at drama and and blokes who I admired, like Alex Stewart, the wonderful cricketer, double hundred, two hundreds in uh, New Zealand. When he got them the hundreds. Nas just said there you made him cry. You made Jimmy cry. What? Um, that was obviously in the yeah. post-match interview, was it? But a devastating end for you there. Yeah, well, we um, got quite close and obviously gutted to him. <sighs> that is a terrible moment. I mean, England had just lost dramatically. And, you know, numbnuts here have to go and do the post-match presentation as, <laughs> as usual. And, you know, can you think of anything worse? You've got to chat to these guys. I've, I've done so many of them now. You, you've got to do Alistair Cook when they've lost and his job's you on are. the line. We you've had, got to ask had... him the nasty question. It's horrendous. <laughs> Keezy and Wardy goes and does the old 100 well played. Aren't you brilliant? No. You Go and do the dodgy interview. <laughs> then you've got to, I've got to go and do the one, well, you know, is it about time you stood down type of question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right, I suppose what we've got to do, so we've got to try and make the last two. Cook's farewell, I think, can go in there. I think you all picked that. Well, Nass and Bumble did. Um, so Why don't farewell, you combine uh, Cook and Anderson on that day? Can combine Cook and Anderson. Yeah, and that then makes it easy because then we can have either, we can have our great mate Shane Warne, his 700th wicket that Ath picked, or you can have KP, a KP knock. I'm going to go Shane Warne. I think it would be odd. Just remember, as host, you were supposed to say this at the beginning, Rob, but we can only choose moments that we've had either live coverage or highlights. So we couldn't choose the Shane Warne ball of the century to Gatting or whatever. It was neither highlights nor live. I think it would be very odd for 30 years of Sky not to have the greatest bowler, you know, in that period, which is Shane Warne. Very incredibly watchable, in-your-face cricketer, very charismatic, has an aura about him. Um, at the MCG, is home ground, and not just getting a Tom Noddy number 10-11 out, it's caught deep mid-wicket getting Andrew Strauss out, you know, serious player. Um, I would go um, Warren. It's also a global game. You know, I know KP and Cook and Anderson means a lot to us and England fans, but, you know, Shane Warren is a, a globally great cricketer. I'd, I'd agree with that. I mean, our 30 years that we're talking about, there's been a lot of, obviously, England cricket home and abroad, but we, we have covered the global game, all kinds of neutral series that have not involved England and we've seen some great great cricketers in that time I don't think probably there's been a greater cricketer than Shane Warne 700 for Shane Warne what a way to get there slightly floated in the air spinning through the gate from Andrew Strauss the MCG goes wild 700 for Shane Warne well we've had our view here and I think you've got a dilemma because, I mean, how can you tell Warney that he's not in? I mean, you've, you've got to, he'd be really upset. Shane Warne would <laughs> be for KP. beside himself. And then on the other hand, how are you, how are you, how are you Rob, going to tell KP that he's not in? <laughs> you, you know, you've got to make this decision. We've given our, we've given our ideas and it's come down to Shane Warne or Kevin Peterson. Over to you, Rob. <laughs> I'm going to go with, I think you make a com compelling case for both, but I'm going to go with Shane Warne. I surprise, think surprise. 
Um, and what I'll do, like, I'll do that great captain's trick and I'll go up to Shane Warne and say, you know, I picked you. And I'll go to KP and say, they didn't pick you. <laughs> <laughs> so, if I'm right, it'd be a nightmare if I've got, my, if I've got it wrong. We've only Eleven. But you can debate the order, I think. This isn't like a one, this is the best and so on. These are all the top ten. So we've got England's World Cup win, Stokes Headingley, Women's World Cup of 2017, Edgebaston 05, the six sixes with Uvraj and what that then meant for world cricket. Laras 375, Karachi, the win in the dark. Melbourne, Strauss's team going over there and winning that Ashes series. Cook's farewell with a slash Anderson. Um, and then we've got Warney for his 700th wicket. Happy with that? Very happy. Perfect, Rob. Well done. <coughs> and I'd have had five of them. <laughs> <laughs> Rob, on the back of that, Rob, Go on. can we just do individually, just do, because I saw Af had his, and I thought it was a good one. It's a serious game. But there have been some funny moments. Can we all pick our, our relatively humorous moment, if possible? Yeah. Like, can I go first? Because one of the off the field, I'm going to go. And I could have picked about 20 Bumble moments, to be honest, at least. But I'm going to do Bumble's um, umpiring thing in the Lord's <laughs> indoor school. And he took the mick out of various umpires. And he did that funny walk, etc. So I'm going to do Bumble's umpiring DRS demo in the Lord's Indoor School is my funny moment. Harry Baldwin used to stand like this, and that, that was it, all day. And at the end of the over, he'd call over, over, and then he'd go to square leg. And this is how he used to go to square leg. <laughs> Keep it up. <laughs> that were Harry Baldwin. He were an absolute star. <laughs> Harry Baldwin. <laughs> well, I'm I'm gonna stick with the, the Marlon Samuels uh, salute to Ben Stokes. I, I remember. Sitting there watching, I wasn't on commentary, but I had a cup of coffee in my hand and I just spat out the coffee when I saw that. <laughs> Maybe it's just my sense of humour, but it made me laugh and it made me giggle for a, a whole night thinking about it. <laughs> I thought it was hilarious, so I'm going to go for the Marlon Samuel salute to Ben Stokes. And ben Stokes is gone and is saluted off the field by Marlon Samuels. I think the funniest moment was when I was England coach and NASA was LBW to Carl Hooper. Now that was hilarious. <laughs> We've I never mean, seen that, that before, have we? No, that, that is absolutely better than Ben Hill. <laughs> oh, nothing you can do about that. Well, I just don't think you can play this. I don't think there's any shot in the book that legislates for that. Nasser is saying knows he's gone. Keys, do you go one or not? Oh, my, the, one of the funniest moments of my life, and it was the whole build up to it, was when Bumble and Fred Eddie. did the um, yeah. 20. <laughs> because Fred, <laughs> like we played oh, golf he... the day before, Fred and I. And he was, so, he genuinely thought, he was like, there's going to be 25,000 there. <laughs> I'm going to be brilliant. You know, <laughs> like Bumble's going to be useless doing Johnny Cash, and I he's telling Reva the producer, he said, You make sure you get me a proper jumpsuit. Yeah, uh, it is. <laughs> I don't want it. they better get me a proper one, Keezy. I'm not doing this, you know, no half measures. And then he did the worst to suspicious minds. Bumble actually sounded like Johnny Cash, and then he tripped over that speaker. I thought. <laughs> Could not have done that any better. I suppose when we put this out, 
everyone can debate those. So if you follow Sky Cricket's Twitter, you can have your two pennies worth on whether you agree, whether you think KP should have been in there, any of the things, any of the moments over the last 30 years, as Nas said, it has to have been covered by Sky. So whether that was highlights back in 05 um, or the full coverage since we've had that. Uh, but I hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, boys, thank you very much. And you can watch all of these things that we've done in lockdown on the Sky Cricket YouTube channel. There is loads of stuff now. I can't even remember all of it, but there's plenty for you to look at. Stay as well as you possibly can, everyone. Cut away. Cut away for four. What an innings. What a player. He's got it. England have won the World Cup by the barest of margins. By the barest of all margins. Absolute ecstasy for England. Oh, it's in the yeah. end. Of sport. What a victory. England have pulled it off. Australia are beaten, well beaten, beaten into the earth. Yeah! Born, England have won the World Cup. Six sixes in an over. Yugrad Singh finishes things off in style. 700 for Shane Wong. The MCG goes wild. He's gone for the pole. And there it is. The new world record holder is Brian Charles Lara of Trinidad and Tobago. Already, Nasser Hussein is celebrating. England have won this third test match at Karachi. A century in his first ever test match and no century in his last. Well played. Sky Sports Cricket. Feel it all.